I ain't funny though, so everything's good. Hold on. On the episodes, I don't know. I might beat you. Hey, whoa, whoa, whoa. 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 Hey. I don't know about that, bro. Welcome to and welcome back to the HBCU podcast. Yes, sir. If you are watching us on YouTube, what's going on? Like, comment, and subscribe. We are engaging with y'all. If you're listening to us on the other listening platforms, please leave a rating and subscribe there as well. I'm one of the co-hosts, Good Rising Good People, Bobby K, and the other co-host. Sheen the dream, you already know what it is. I'm waiting uh, for the episode where you say it seemed a nightmare, but you know, I guess that's that not happened. never happened. <laughs> never, never, never. Nope. Never. I guess. All right. I feel you, bro. All right. So before we get into the topic of today, it's actually a pretty important topic, kind of a serious one. Uh Hashim has the HBC for fact of this episode. So yes, sir. Uh so. The fun fact of the day is just a general fun fact about HBCUs. Uh, they have made over $10.2 billion positive impact on the nation's economy. So I don't know how, like, you billion dollars is a lot, um, even for, like, just a particular type of college. Um, yeah. Why, bro? What the fuck just happened? <laughs> what just happened? I have this show on Do Not Save. How does a scam call get through? Oh, wow. I think mine's on Do Not Save, too. Um, All right. Yeah, just at the Yeah, so even, even <laughs> for, like, a particular type of college, that's still a large sum. Um, yeah. That could even, even be for, like, people that graduated and become doctors or lawyers or good people within society, you know? Is, I have a, is that, does the fact, is that an accumulation of all the HBCUs, like, in general, like, ever? Or is that just, like, annually? Uh, I'm going to say in general. I feel okay. like it, it could be annual. I have no idea. It could go either way. But I, 10, I think 10 billion like, positive income to the economy is, is a crazy stat for, I, like specific colleges like HBCUs are, you know what I mean? Yeah. So I think I think it would be overall. Um mm -hmm. it go either way, but they didn't specify. Well regardless that's that's definitely uh I guess a positive. But it's supposed to be a positive. So shout out to that fun fact Hashim. But today's topic, this episode's topic is should we gatekeep black culture? And the reason why uh, I specifically wanted to do this topic is because, you know, I've been mulling over this question for a while now, for several years, you know, as things have evolved in music and fashion and different spaces that, uh, you know, encompasses a lot of black people. And even talking about like, you know, the last, you know, couple of recordings and episodes we've done about anime and stuff and talking about Japanese culture it's really had me mull over a lot like how I don't feel like we gatekeep black culture enough enough yeah what 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 bad aspects I know there's bad aspects but what bad aspects are you like thinking of that so like to? for example like you know I feel like hip-hop specifically right I love hip hop. I've loved it since I was a child. And a big reason why I've loved it is because it felt like it was, I don't want to say exclusive to us, but it felt like it was a, a footprint, an imprint on our emotions, on our circumstances and living conditions, on just it's like authentic. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Like it has a real life, like authentic aspect to it that holds true to the fabric of black people. Mm -hmm. But I feel like as the years have gone by and it's become more commercialized and more mainstream, 
yes, it brought more capital to, you know, the genre and to the people who are the, you know, the biggest, you know, people of the genre, executives, artists, whatever, which you get to debate is if that's a good or a bad thing. But it's also, I feel like, watered it down a lot, too, in terms of the actual quality and in terms of, like, the seriousness of the the essence of the genre and what is is intentionally initially was meant to represent to our yeah. community and to us I am, feel I, like, am I you think I'm bugging for that or nah it's definitely watered down I agree with that part but I feel like that's that comes with studios or the people that have the artists on the contract and they want them to make radio friendly songs which not may not be what they're about especially if you're like underground rapper coming up and they start getting big and they have one good like not one good song but one like mainstream song one and wonders want, yeah and they mm-hmm. want them to keep making those type of songs and maybe that's just not them like that's not the audience they want to um get to or reach um so i think the studios and the pressure that they put on artists to make these songs that aren't really them mm-hmm. orders down what rap is or yeah, what rap is, as well as a lot of rap itself has evolved into something that's not authentic. Like people rap that's about true. stuff that's not what they are about. Everybody ain't. I, I, hey, no. news, news flash for anyone who's listening or watching us. More than like you, your favorite rapper doesn't even have a criminal rap sheet at all. So when they talk about the Thule, when they talk about stabbing, when they talk about all this other bullshit, even when it comes to them getting women, getting all the bitches, whatever, I promise you majority of them are lying or or they're exaggerating a lot. So... I feel like, yes. Like, I, I don't know if you've seen that, uh, what was it? I forgot, Rap Genius on Lil Tecca. Mm-hmm. He's, very, he's very honest. He's like... Uh, yeah, I don't have no guns. I've never been to Paris. I rap about it, but I've never been to. I always wish I could. But I that's that's. You see what I'm saying? But and he's you know, a like, young artist. But it's the thing is like, it was never something that says. There's never a rule that says, "Oh, you got to rap about your life." But that's what it was previously. You feel me? That's it's how rapping was a form of expressing themselves. Mm-hmm. of like the things they went through in their life you know okay. uh, crime, but a lot of yeah. things that but certain uh, certain type of i don't, I don't want to label all rappers or all mcs but certain type of hip-hop artists are not living having lived majority if not all of the life that they're talking about they're basing it off of what they've seen or what they know from like media or whatever the case may be that happens in certain communities. It's not something that they themselves have interacted with. No, I, I agree. I'm just saying the older version, older rappers or older mm-hmm. music, like look at 50 Cent. He rapped about his life, bro. He got yeah. shot. That's real. That's not cool. Fun. Well, like, but I'm talking about like that's he's also so it, is, it is authentic. They get to rap about this is how they express themselves about what happened in their life. Maybe it's traumatizing. Maybe it's a way to express themselves. Um, I feel like Eminem did, did that too. And yeah. what's your thoughts on Eminem? But he was also so, very, he was, Eminem was also a prime example of someone who was heavy into shot value in, in his music, especially early, early in his career. Like he would just say a lot of, like, he had the, the well, I don't know if we could say it, fuck it. The, the Columbine bar in um, one, of, one of his songs that is so like, triggering the people that literally they had to edit it out from even the explicit version because of what he said mm-hmm. about that so like but yeah I, I feel like I feel like capitalism in a way has deterred the ability to gatekeep culture well to a certain degree at I, least at least in at least in America I also want to say about the the music thing um, like I said, music has evolved. Obviously, it's going to evolve. Uh, mm-hmm. What is entertaining for people these days or a younger generation 
isn't like words. It, it might be just something that's catchy. That's true. Like, Gucci gang, Gucci gang, Gucci gang, Gucci gang. The fuck does that mean, bro? <laughs> like it, 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 it doesn't have no meaning. In the it snow. means he watched Something Gucci, and therefore, if a plethora of people watch Gucci, they are part of a gang. They hence Gucci gang. Shut up! Come on, you got to keep up, bro. Nah, this bar. man, this is man Gucci one on one out here. Now, I don't like, like that lot. shit. I don't like little pump at all. It's but I'm just saying, you know. But yeah, I get what you. No, I, all jokes aside, I, I see what you mean. I know. Like I, I, I get like, and hip hop isn't meant to be just about lyricism. You know, it's about to. It's supposed to be about a feel. It's supposed to be about you know. There's aspects of original hip hop that was about break dancing and DJing. So it is also about dancing and you know having you know entertainment aspect that it is a it is a corporate business at the end of the day too what i'm saying with gatekeeping though is more so like the fact that it's like so diluted with people who want to be a part of hip-hop culture which i think is intertwined with black culture yeah but then don't really respect the real life aspect of black people they want the black the black what was it they want the Guy, I, get it. I know what you're about to say. <laughs> I, I, I can't. I can't think of it right now. If you can say it, you can say it. Paraphrase but, it. Paraphrase it. Um, they want all the good things about being black, or all the popular things about being black, but not the struggle. Exactly. Uh, and that's, and that's, that's my right. problem. Um, you definitely like, fucked I, up I, that saying, but no, no, yeah, I, I, I couldn't think of the right words, but um, like I don't have a problem if somebody's showing appreciation for it. Like, they're not saying, Mm -mm. all right, this is my original style. This is my box braids. This is my original thing I thought of at first. Mm -hmm. Uh, But if you're like, yeah, I really was, like, inspired by it. And as long as you don't, like, make a fool of yourself. If you can't pull it off, don't do it. Um, I mean, there's a difference, though. Can we acknowledge there's a difference, though, between, like, admiration and inspiration and mockery? Because there's a fine line between the two. And I feel like a lot of people who are non-black, they do a lot of shit that becomes a mockery of our culture. To, I and, but example, like, like the hair, for example, like the box braids or something. Like they, I don't feel like they're doing it within the heart. Uh, the mindset of like oh yeah you know i just have such a strong appreciation they're doing it because it's trendy they're doing it yeah. because it, like they they feel like closer to black culture you know what i'm saying closer to you know what's popping because a lot of times black people set at least in in america yeah. a lot, black people set the culture for a lot of different aspects of like entertainment and in general mm-hmm. like with with slang with everything another thing i agree i, I agree 100 percent agree and going back to like how you said they'll do the hairstyles not to show admiration another thing that gets me tight is like they would do the same hairstyle as somebody that's black and mm-hmm. in society not looked down upon you know how if you have certain hairstyles uh if you had dreads people some people think oh he's dirty or you can't even wear practice. dreads in certain workplaces. Yeah, but people can have man buns. Like I it's it's not uh consistent. It's, yeah, like people I've you seen and you heard of like people not be able to graduate because they have dreads. Mm-hmm. Here told. The man went to school for four years and now you're saying he can't graduate while and he, he he's valid Victorian and stuff like that. Like remember do you remember else, that Sorry to cut you off. Do you remember the guy even, uh, I think he was Jamaican, I'm not sure, but it was a student who had dress, who was on the wrestling team. Yes, I but, remember. Yeah, remember that. Yeah, I think cut that, it off right before, the, right before the um match. That's what I'm saying. But yes. imagine if a white person had long hair that, you know, went down to their shoulder. Oh, yeah, you guys, they're not going to ask him to cut his straight hair before a match. Like... <laughs> They're going to just have him roll it up or put a pin in it or something and allow him to do what he does. 
So like, cool. yeah, that's that's another problem. Um, if you're taking from our culture, but it's still it's still looked upon better if you do it instead of us. So you know that's and, and that could not oh, that could also not be that person's fault, but it's still how it's seen. You feel me? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's pretty messed up, honestly. But I'll give you another example. Like even with white people saying the N word, when we was in high school, I would always, you know, because I would, I had, you know, a decent amount of white people that I felt like I was cool with when you know we was in middle school and high school. But and you can attest to this, we had some racist motherfuckers in high school. <sighs> so. And sometimes when I say racist, I don't always mean overt. I mean, like, they, it could be, it's subtle as well. You know what I'm saying? Like, they think because they have black friends that they can say the N word. And that will always piss me off because I'm like, nah, like, <laughs> just because we cool, just because you know Hashim and this black person, and this black person, and you, you, we on the same sports team or whatever the case may be, doesn't give you that license to think it's cool to say that shit. Mm-hmm. And it's like, but they think it's okay because the other black homies or black friends that they have allowed them to say it around them. So now they think they can say it around all black people. As if all black people is not going to curse you out or want to throw these hands mm-hmm. more or less. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So it's like there's an inconsistency with what certain black people allow white people or just non-black people in general to do i don't want to make it exclusively to white people i'm but they're the best example yeah. but it's a it's a it's it's an inconsistency between what some black people allow certain non-black people to do and say compared to others who aren't with the shits and that's, that's part true. of the problem too i feel like that yeah. th- that situation it's i want to say environment based so if they uh, New York City is a big example because you can hear most of pretty much anybody. Yeah. Uh, and if they grew up in like the hood, they grew up near gang violence. Um, mm-hmm. Perfect example. I could definitely picture Tommy off of power saying it. A hundred percent. Garb just, but like I said, <laughs> I think it based on, for that specific uh, thing. It's region or environment what they grew up to mm-hmm. in so if you grew up in it's like saying if i'm not defending by the way just saying that it's like no 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 Play devil's advocate. It's, it's good. you grew up in like china right and you're okay. speaking you're a native speaker you're chinese like you literally you're born there raised there you're chinese by okay rules you're chinese so you're gonna speak like you're Chinese, regardless of your color. You said um, Chinese like ten times already. I know, <laughs> but you guys, you really you guys, emphasizing Chinese. Like you guys we've been Chinese. talking about Japanese culture so much, you want to say because, you love Chinese. I see what you're doing. I, yeah, but like, I see what you're you doing. Can speak Chinese, and I don't know what type of slang they have, but you'll probably more likely be willing to use that type of slang, even if it's not theoretically meant for you. You know what I'm saying? I feel like I, I I get what you're saying, but I feel like in other countries with other cultures, like like for example, like Asian culture, they are more protective of certain customary things that involves their culture. They're more traditional. In terms of, huh? They're more traditional. Yeah, they're more traditional, and like my thing is like, I, I'm all for inclusivity. I body that word, by the way. Mm-hmm. I'm all for inclusive. <laughs> yep. <laughs> so smooth it came out. Fine. You know what I'm saying? Hey, college works. Nah, uh, I'm all for inclusivity at you know I me mean, and diversity, of course, and having people around each other. Like I've always been around different walks of life my whole life since I was a child. Bars. But facts, you know what I'm saying? Hey. It's different right now. Nah, but um <laughs> <laughs> I wrote a poem in a couple months, but still. But at the same time, it's it's like I said, it's blurred 
but the lines get blurred from being inclusive and allowing people to indulge in your culture to where it starts to become whitewashed or it starts mm-hmm. to become, like I said before, diluted because you're, you're allowing them complete open access to every part of the culture to people who aren't contributing to the culture. Yeah. And that's a, that's a problem because it's like when real shit happens to us and that's like detrimental, those same people that was wanting to be a part of the culture are not the same, always the same ones who are trying to defend us. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? They have the ability to go back to their right. You know know what I'm saying? And putting out the tweet by a a standalone tweet by itself is not being defensive towards us either, by the way. Just putting it out there. But putting a hashtag blank blah blank is not no. Mm -hmm. So just putting that out there too. Because some of y'all some of y'all be thinking y'all social justice warriors and it'd be pissing me off. Niggas never put in no donation to no funds for no no cause or nothing, but want to put out a hashtag and think you're doing something. Shut the fuck up. But anyway, oh, Bobby. I'm in my bag in this, this episode. I see. I see. <laughs> oh, shit. Well, I was going to say, damn. Oh, yeah. I would see a, a lot of, like, on, on like, social media, like, a lot of women, uh, black women, saying how they used to get bullied for the natural futures that they have. Like oh, mm-hmm. uh, lips, big lips, nose, nose, but yeah. and now that's what everybody seeks, or that's what yeah, that's what everybody seeks. Most people seek Kardashian uh, effect. Yeah, pretty much, and that's what most people seek. And I'm like, first of all, like I never, why, like why would you bully somebody off of that? First of all, right? I I used to get yeah, bullied for anything though. I you yeah, I used to get teased and bullied for my physical features all the time. For my hair, uh my hairline, for my teeth, for my dark skin. I used to get all types of dark skin jokes. Still but do sometimes. Like, you see so many models that are darker than both of us and like oh people on social media is like, oh my god, that's so beautiful. And like where was that? But you gotta keep in mind too, bro, like we was in high school almost a decade ago. Hey, 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 hey. <laughs> What's going on here? What's going on here? What's going on oh, my here? bad. Oh, oh, we're showing our age. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Hey, we was in high school. We was in high school just a few years back. And so. Six, seven years ago, man. That's, well, man. Yeah, ain't no problem. Yeah, eight, eight going on nine. But that's neither here nor there, though. Things have changed a lot the past decade. And so, you know, when it comes to appreciating different aspects of, of people and in different walks of life, and that's where the hypersensitivity comes into play. And, you know, sometimes that's not always a great thing because it can go too far to where so, everything man. becomes too PC and too, you know, too uh, bogged down and being like, you know, Oh, we gotta be, you know, cautious of everything and everybody. On. Yeah, it, it that fucks up creativity in a lot of aspects as well. But it's it's good in a sense of like the people who have didn't have voices before do now. And having the hypersensitivity when it comes to your own individual culture that you represent is yeah. a big thing. Like you're Jamaican, like so for you is like. Jamaican culture is 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 a special place to you. Yeah, you, but you every, hold it to a high regard. But everybody always appreciated it. Like, do they appreciate was, it, or is it just they fuck with the music? Uh music, hairstyles, food. Um, making food. I, 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 food. I, I would say I haven't heard a lot of roasting of it. You feel me? Not not so much as how people will bash black people in general. You feel me? Even though Jamaicans are Our majority, I, right? But they could they could be any any race. Reality. I feel you. 
But also um, Jamaican, Jam- being Jamaican is more of like a um, like a nationality too. So it's yes. not like based in like you know race more or less. Even though most Jamaicans are black, but yeah, true. But like it's it's I don't know. It's, it's difficult to bog down. But I don't like the sensitivity aspect if you didn't go through like a struggle Mm. like you know everybody knows the history of black people right yeah Mm -hmm. so we have a right to be mad you know yes we have a right to like we have to work from the ground up to get to the the even the rights that we have right now and they aren't even that 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 great like the and there's so many root and there's loopholes in that by itself too you feel me but we did come a far way to what what i read in history books which may not be true as well it could be much worse they don't even quant and that in the history books don't even quantify everything that happened by itself too yeah. that's what i was gonna say like it could be much worse just because it's written by who you think writes the textbooks or who wrote it down whose perspective you're seeing it from you feel me I'm trying to think Maybe. of a cole bar cole cole said this in uh brackets on kod yeah uh you know what i'm talking about right the song when you I know, talk about I taxes, know song. yeah, he's like, um, bar. I pay so much taxes, so much taxes, shit don't make sense. What do my dogs go? You see that I ain't to be convinced. Trying to be opposed to school, but my niggas never graduate. They ain't got the tools. Basically, you're saying like the white, the people with the whitest of skin always seem to white out their sins. Mm-hmm. One of the hardest bars, bars. Cole's ever said. Cool. But it's a fact, though. Cold world, you know, that's our favorite artist. But mm-hmm. you know. It's a it's true though. It's true. Yeah. And so it's like the things you read or you see in a documentary or you see like in just certain videos, whatever, about what hap- was happened to us so many years and still to this day. So oftentimes it's worse than that. It's being it's being like trivialized sometimes because it's 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 so much worse and so much deeper than that and layered. Mm-hmm. But it's like it's how do you summarize like enslavement? <laughs> like how do you summarize imprisonment? How do you summarize um making people feel inferior as a as a as a as a species or whatnot? You know what I'm saying? Just for the, col- like, just for the color of their skin. Right. Like it's hard to it's hard to really summarize that and to like just put it into like a a short span of words you know what i mean Mm -hmm. so with that history historical nature of our history in this country in society in general but especially this country specifically it's frustrating to not see us hold our culture more close to home because that's the main thing that we should have control over but we can't and it feels yeah. like we are have lost some control even over our own culture because of it being monetized. Yeah, but like how could you stop other people from taking from our culture? It's so widely it's not about stopping people from taking from the culture, it's about us being more sensitive about our culture, the way that other people uh in their in their country in their regions or whatever hold their culture to a high regard and don't let anybody just come in and just abuse it and use it at wit's end you know what i'm saying yeah we don't we, it's, it's it's different like if you go to other countries that's majority of them and you're coming into that country to take over so like majority of the united states isn't black you know, so it's harder for mm-hmm. uh, it's harder for us to be like, oh, you can't do that. Um, like in those other countries, maybe they could just kill a person and the cops would be like, eh. they had the right to because that's not that's not they're not part of us. Right. I think for but, me, what the issue is, is the fact that I feel I, I just from a visual aspect, I don't yeah. see other people's cultures get. Um, and I again. I could be wrong. Just because you don't see something doesn't mean it doesn't happen. Mm-hmm. But 
I don't see other people's cultures get um, mocked or get uh, used as often as black culture. Like, I don't see, like, um, certain aspects of Hispanic culture. Like, yeah, they'll play, like, like a suavemente in, in a club or something. Like, they play, like, you know, reggaeton or, you know, bachata, some, you know, some form of, like, something that's within the Hispanic culture, a Latino culture. Mm -hmm. But, like, I don't see, like, people who are not from that culture just completely, like, just using it at all costs, the way it happens with us. I feel like so it makes you, it feel like it's not really. It, so it makes it feel like it's not really exclusive to us, and and you know, it just makes it seem like oh, it's just open access in a sense. I feel like it, it is used, but not in a, a bad way. You feel me? It's it's not used in a bad way. I said it's not using the best. So if they're using like Hispanic culture, they might uh -huh. say like hola, right? Or, or blah, blah, mm -hmm. blah. It's not used in a bad way. You know, it's not saying or down or having like a condescending tone towards it most of the time, I say. Okay. My I mean, people wow. do be saying some, you know, use know. that to their advantage. Yeah. You know, but, but I'm I, saying, you're, in general, I see, I know what you mean. Yeah. Compared to like, for black people or black the black culture or African American culture, I feel like most of the time it could be used in or used in a bad condescend condescending way. You feel mm -hmm. me? Like, oh, I'm better than you. Let me mock you. Bro, they they literally had in the record time of recording this, they literally had Tom Brady on watching the uh, Monday Night Football game, doing the, like, commentary with, you know, Peyton and Eli Manning. And apparently he had Chief Keith playing in the background. No, Sosa? You know damn fucking well if no Tom Brady don't be listening to Chief Keith, bro. Like, but this is what I I'm saying. They don't listen to Amigos. The range. What, in the locker room? Nah, like a wedding party, something like that. But I'm saying, though, someone like Tom yeah. Brady, bro. They, they, who, this... Go ahead. Uh, no, but come on now. Like, someone like Tom Brady, though, like, the way he looks, the way he presents himself, mm -hmm. the person the person he's shown himself to be publicly, I really don't think he listens to Chief Keith in real life. Like, on they, his they, own. Like he, he, He's only playing that just because of the team that he verse. Um, That's the same way if, like, if Michael Jordan started listening to after he just – smack some team in the finals, start listening mm -hmm. to, like, I don't know, what's the native journey. I don't know. <laughs> I I retire or something like that, you know? It's just really just that, for that case, it's just, like, I, he's that it's good. More, so he's it's more, you're, saying, you're saying it's more of a petty move. Yeah, I'm more, I say that's more of, like, oh, like, I'm one of the best quarterbacks to ever live. I'm going to be petty because they mm -hmm. think I'm not, I'm not good because I'm older. Now, mm -hmm. that's that's why I feel like it's like you know, he cheated. How you cheat, man? Spy game. That's one. The, that's one Super Bowl. The flake like gate. The, the six, bro. The flake gate. How? That's one Super Bowl out of the six or something. That's whatever. two out of the seven, sir. Two. The, the flake gate and spy gate. There's no other quarterback that's had two different scandals uh, about some uh, that, that's been very suspicious. On what they've oh, been doing. You have to get there somewhere. Along with other stuff, like, you know what I mean, with the refs and them, like, people, uh, team. I remember teams uh, used to complain about them, like, when they would go to Fosboro, about them, like, the audio being messed up or thinking someone's listening, finding the audio. Tough. Wow. Tough. Wow. I don't wow. know how football like that, bro. Wow. Wow. So, imagine – I I put it in basketball terms for you. So imagine yeah. Frank Vogel's calling the game. Y'all yeah. playing, uh, you know, whoever, and they Play already Knicks. know y'all plays. They know y'all plays already. It's not as significant for basketball as it is for football, because you know, it's set plays. Basketball is more like a fluid because we can have set plays, but at the same mm -hmm. time, it's like it's always changing. 
You feel me? Yeah. Um, but that would that still not be an unfair advantage? I mean, for sure. But, you know, if you got LeBron, AD, Brody, you know, if you could do you could do so much. Well, y'all winning the title? Y'all winning the title this year? We in the chip, mellow. Okay. Yeah, remember? Yeah, remember he said this. A uh, whole side tangent, but yeah, remember he said he, he said this. Yeah. Yeah, so chip, when they don't, we the chip. When they don't, chip. when they don't, I'm gonna be on your ass. Just know. Hey yo. Oh my god. Back your head again, Bobby. Hey. All right. Well, all right. Let's get into the confession, yeah. man. Um, the juicy. Oh. oh my Wale, zoom in on him for saying that juicy part, please. <laughs> uh do you think black culture should be gate gate kept or there should be gatekeeping of black culture? Uh I feel like we could try, but it's it's ultimately not gonna work just because it's so widespread, worldly spread. Um it's too big. You now. can hold people, you could you could huh? It's too big now. Yeah, you can hold people accountable for the people that are in the small circles that you have, but like, there's only so much you could do. Well, let's get into the HBCU confession. Uh, these are my confessions. So, this is from <laughs> this is from uh, ASU. Okay, we got school. So, yes, yes, yes. So, my boyfriend still has sex tape of him and his old girl. Oh. I want him to delete them because why do you still have them? Uh, I said he don't respect you first. He don't uh, respect you, queen. Second, how do you even find how, how did she find those videos? That's a good just, question. You didn't hide had, them well if she could find your sex tapes, bro. I'm not going to hold you. This man was probably you know, I'm not going to go there. What you was about to say? Don't go there. No, 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 he's, no, 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 no. He's, probably, call, he's probably calling the action. He's Ooh. probably viewing them. Ooh. Yeah, and, and and getting the shit off too? While he's viewing them? I don't know what he's doing, bro. That's that's use your imagination. I'm I'm definitely not. I thought that's what <laughs> you was insinuating, <laughs> sir. What the hell? I thought that's what you was insinuating. Yeah, yeah, that was what I was insinuating. Okay, thank you. But I, I, think like that, I think that's uh, disrespectful, um, especially if he didn't delete it uh, when you asked him to. Uh, Bro, she said six tapes. That He has multiple. Oh, she said six? No, she said tapes. She said there's multiple. Oh, multiple so you, tapes. Yeah, of oh, him and his ex. Oh, that's tough. That's yeah. big tough. Yeah, uh, what's your opinion on? I say he's he's not respectful, but you know. I mean, oh no, nah. no, nah. oh, no, nah. <laughs> oh, nah. this man started off with. I mean, oh no, nah. wait, a menace to society. Yeah, wait, wait. I'm trying not to. I'm tr I'm trying not to be a villain in this scenario. Mm -hmm. But like, okay, so she said, I want him to delete them. Yeah. Which is obvious. Yeah. But it's like, at, at that point, like, if you know that he has those tapes with him and his ex, why are you even, like, entertaining being with him at that point? Because clearly his mind is still on her in some capacity. Even if he's happy, quote, unquote, with you emotionally, sexually, he's thinking about her. Or so why are you may still maybe, entertaining? Hmm. Maybe his hey. is down, and that's the only video he got. And he's like, well, I got to do what I got to do. First of all, who says that he uses hey. Maybe he uses hey. videos. Hey, yo, this man is well, well versatile. Hey, wait, 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 Tom, oh, oh, oh. wait, 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 yo, you this literally man. just brought up a whole but everybody we knows. Hey. Shut the fuck. Shut. Did I say no? Excuse. Bro. No, you just brought up a weak ass excuse for why he had sex tapes of him and his ex, and yeah. you talking about me? Wow. I mean, you you start off your your rebuttal to with I mean, 
So I was, I, just, I, I, was uh, I was just playing through the whole scenario though because she's making it seem like she's like upset, but she's still like with him. I don't know. I know personally. Let me find out my ex, my my girl, mm-hmm. is still keeping sex tapes of her and her ex raw dogging her. I'm mm-hmm. not gonna be with her no more. I wouldn't be with her no more. Well, if y'all married. That's tough. What if we're married? That's even worse. That's even worse. We got a whole, we had a whole wedding, a whole ass wedding, a honeymoon, all that with children. We literally reproduced with one another and you still got tapes of the last dick you had? You got to tough it out. You got to tough it out for the kids. Bobby, uh, Bobita. <laughs> you tough for so, the so you gonna be okay with that? I said you got tough that for the kids. No, no, no. I'm asking Hashini. You, you okay with that? Nah, Bobby, Bobby. I said you, not me. This, I'm this asking is my you a confession, sir. This I'm not asking my you a confession. Question. This is your confession. It's not my confession at all. Do you not read it? <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely not. I'm asking you, did, sir. Did you not read the question? Bobby? Listen, listen. Oh, you know, matter of fact, you're you're. Out of the two of us, you're the one that's not single. So, yes, I am not. Would single. you be okay? Would you be okay with this? Nah. <laughs> but then again, you're not supposed to go through your partner's phone if you really trust them. Well, Who bye. says she went through his phone? How else would she find this? VHS. What do you mean, Bobby? People in college don't know what VHS is. Wow, that's that's messed up. You calling them you calling them slow in college? That's crazy, bro. Wow. They were born born two thousand. No, they don't have to necessarily be two thousand, baby. Oh, two thousand three. Sorry, Bob. They, wow. they could be no. That's if they're freshmen. Who yeah, says that's, they're freshmen? Freshmen. I mean, if they're seniors, they could be fake nineties babies. They could be born in ninety eight, ninety nine. You know what I mean? Fake nineties babies. You know what I'm saying? Don't don't don't. Uh, don't. Nah, they'd be graduated, bro. You could be 22 or 23 still be in college as a senior if you started late or whenever your birthday is. I mean, I Don't guess. do that. Come on now. Don't yeah. come after the TikTok babies like that. They, they get enough slander. You know what I'm saying? We slander them all the time. <laughs> yeah, so I think it's... Yeah, Yo, Hashim just said you. some bullshit, <laughs> y'all. I'm telling you right now. He got to respect you. But I think we can wrap it up. We can definitely wrap it up. <laughs> I'm I'm gonna make sure Wale keeps the party that just got cut out. Um, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> yeah, thank you thank guys y'all. for watching. Yeah. You know, if you're watching on YouTube, thank you for watching. If you're listening to us on Spotify or the other streaming platforms, thank you for listening. Please comment, subscribe, um, interact with us. Let us know what your thoughts are, new topics that you want us to discuss. Um. Any final thoughts, Bobby? Follow us on Instagram, uh, the HBCU Podcast. Our individual socials is there, along with uh, our editor, Wale. Shout out to Wale for editing this. Back, big back. And yeah, like Hashim said, uh, engage with us on YouTube, though, in the comments. You know, we appreciate you guys engaging with us, you know, on the Instagram page, but also engage with us on the YouTube videos as well. Mm-hmm. We appreciate it, it means a lot. Uh, but thank y'all for listening and watching. We out of here. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 Hey.